Yeah, it was during the time I was in South Atlantic Pro Wrestling. This wasn't in, in, in Nelson's. It was after okay. Nelson had stopped, and then there was George Scott started one up, and I was carrying a strap for them. I ended up carrying a strap for them. And uh, I remembered uh, uh, we were at a club, and I was with a friend of mine who set up the ring. He was a nice guy, you know. He was hanging out with the boys, and uh, I, me and him became friends, and we traveled sometimes together. And he, he had his his uh, his wife or fiance uh, with him, and we were at this Plum Crazies, and we were sitting up at the bar, and they, you know, they were already there. We came in, and they had had a few drinks, and they were tipsy, and they were messing around, and they reached over and grabbed her her, her tit, and. Uh, my buddy goes, hey, come on. And she was really mad. She was upset, like, huh? Like, what are you doing? And she's welded down. And so I didn't say anything, you know, because you don't get in the middle of the voice, you know, you just whatever, let it roll. Well, he did it again. And now we're talking about, this is borderline rape. Because, <laughs> you know, he was grabbing her. And it was like, she made it very clear that it wasn't okay. Well, then my friend was a little more upset, which I couldn't blame him, but he can't, he can't take these guys. And so then I said something, I was kind of laughing, oh, come on, you guys, man, enough. All right, all right, all right, all right, you had your fun. And uh, they were like, whoa, 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 what are you doing? Are you sleeping with her? Are you know, it was like, oh man, whatever. You know, he ignored it and he did it again. And that's, I lost it. And I went to go after him and as soon as I did, because of what was going on, uh, the bartender had told the bouncer, which I didn't know at the time, that these guys were doing that and they were going to kick him out. Well, just as that happened, the bouncers had luckily had just come up, or otherwise I'd been in jail, um, come up and saw him do it again. And I went at him, and the, this dude was a big dude, 260, big bouncer, grabbed me from behind and squeezed me and said, Hey, Ken, it's me, man, chill out. And I was like, I wanted to kill him. Well, the other bouncers kicked him out, told them guys to get out. And so they ended up kicking him out. Well, I was fuming, big time fuming. So I knew we were staying at the hotel downtown. I knew that's where they were at. So as soon as they let me go, they was talking, and I said, all right, man, I'll see you later, heading out. This is probably a half hour afterwards. I went to the hotel, and I went to knock on the door because I was going to get in their face and say, listen, that's uncalled for. You know, you want to end up in prison? That's exactly the, what's going to happen. So nobody answered, and I knew they were in there. So I ended up kicking the door down. And as I kicked the door down, the other one, the, the, sh the kind of shorter one that was a heavier set one, uh, no, I'm saying. was laying on the bed. The blonde haired one is yeah. laying on the bed, right? Face down. And I, so I just kind of like paused and that's the last thing I remember. Now, from what I was told um, was that when I came through the door, the, the big yes. one when it was hiding because Obviously, they were afraid because I was pissed. And the other one just laid on the bed. It was like, no, oh, he ain't coming. He can't get in. Well, when I came through the door, the big one had grabbed this phone. And the phone on the bottom had a steel metal plate underneath it. Right? And so as I came through, he hit me in the back of the head. I went, I don't remember, then I went down. And then he put the boots to me, both of them. They had steel toe boots. They cracked my sternum, broke my nose. Pretty much almost killed me. Then drug me outside and were going to throw me over the top of the rail. They were on the second floor on the ground. And um, uh, one of the guys came in, uh, I forget his name, an older guy. And he said, don't, hey man, you guys, you guys need to stop. And he stopped them from doing it, otherwise I wouldn't be here today. Well, went to the hospital. As I was going to the hospital, they had to revive me because I had passed, you know, I mean, I was dying. Um, they did that much damage. Yeah. So I get home and I was laid up for months recovering. And in my head, I was like, I'm going to kill them. When I see them, I'm going to kill them. I'm going to end their days. And especially the big one, because the big one was the one that, was, that I kept hearing talking smack. Right. Well, we, I passed, they were leaving the next day to go to the WWF. And so my paths went to a different direction. I was going to Japan, I was doing things over there, I ended up in doing the fighting over there, and then of course came back to the States, started fighting here. But the whole time all this was going on, I kept hearing them guys saying how they beat me up, how they how he beat me up one-on-one. -on -one. 
like we were facing each other and he just beat me yeah, up. Because he claims the knobs was passed out or something. Yes. Was, like, yeah, and that's that's the absolute, that's the only truthful thing that he said was that when I went in the door, knobs was passed out. But he wasn't passed out for real because he jumped up as soon as this the jackass hit me from behind, they both started putting the boots to me. Right after I was out, I mean, there was yeah. no need to do that. He'd already knocked me out with the phone, right, from behind. So the reason why I was so angry and so really wanted to get at them was because of the, the intent that they had. It wasn't like I didn't know them. It wasn't like we didn't hang out together. It wasn't like we didn't talk or weren't friends, at least I thought, and they were wrong. And for them to go to that extent, to know somebody, and do something like that. I just, to me, I can't put that in. I don't know how anybody could do that. Because you wrestled with, you were one of the boys. With yeah, well, even if you didn't like somebody, but you're still around them, to, to 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 go to that, just to me, I don't know how somebody can do that unless they're they're not normal. And so the anger just kept was inside the whole time. The minute I saw him, I saw him in an airport. And I was in the WWF and they were out because of their antics and it's the way that they treated people and the things that they'd done, they got kicked out, which didn't surprise me. And so I heard the stuff that was said when I went there. And of course the boys were ribbing me about it uh, because they knew it was a sore subject. Yeah, and I kept Sam's saying- Sam's got the reputation of a tough guy all Yeah. Of a so I said, hey, uh, whatever. And they kept ribbing me and I just said, hey, anytime that he's around, you guys will see what I'm talking about. See, because I don't need to say anything because I'll prove it. I got no problem stepping in front of him and proving it. But I'll bet you he does because he knows where I'm at. And I've kept calling him out, telling him to step up and show everybody how tough he is because I'm willing to do it. I'm willing to stand in front of him and let him beat me up the way he did before, the way he claims he did. Please show everybody in the world how tough you are. I'll be there waiting, I'll stand in front of you, I'll even let you throw the first punch. And that's the statement I made. I'll let you throw the first punch. And I'll let you hit me. And I'll bet you I'm still standing there and when I'm done, when you're done throwing that first punch, then I'm gonna kill you. Literally put you in the hospital like you did me, except I'm gonna be facing you. And these are the promos that I cut before I ended up finding him. When I finally found him, I was with Billy Gunn and Road Dog. We were checking in at the table at the counter. And I saw the short one. And I just turned red. I dropped my bag. And he saw me. And he just beelined out of there. Right? Well, then I saw the taller one. And I looked at him. And I started to go after him. And Billy grabbed me. And he goes, not here. Not here. And I was shaking. And so I dropped my bag. Right? He, he beelines. Right? And I'm shaking the whole time. And I had to get checked in. So I get checked in. And we head towards the gate, he's, they're gone, right? And I'm like, mm. like I just, I was, I was just so angry and I was trying to calm down. And Billy's like, dude, you know, just, you never seen anybody that intense. Well, we're walking up to the gate and I hear this voice. Hey man, what's wrong with Shamrock, man? So maybe better give that dude a chill pill. And I saw him and I beeline towards him, jumped over the seats spun him around and I looked at him and I said, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. As minute I said that, he turns, he has a bag in his hand. He turns his back to me, kind of like, I think he's going to swing at me, right? Because he looks like he's turning, maybe he's going to come back. He drops his bag and I'm like, go ahead. Like I said, I'll give you the first punch. And he's, what comes out of his mouth next is just, it, all the anger and everything I had in my body just like, and all the boys are there. I mean, they're all sitting there at the gate. And he goes, if you hit me, it's a federal offense. I was like, that's it? After all this time and how tough you said you're gonna be, that's your comeback, that's your play, really. <laughs> Literally, everybody sitting around just right then and there proved my point. It was like, if you hit me, it's going to be a federal offense. I was like, if I hit you, I mean, in my mind, if I hit you, you're going to be dead. Forget about federal offense. I'm going to be freaking on death row. But I was so angry all that time that when he said that, it was like, 
all the boys were around. It was like, I didn't have to do any, there was nothing else I could have done that would have been better than that, than him completely cowering down and pussying out in front of everybody that he was talking about. If he saw me, that he whipped my ass again. And here I was, and if he hit me, it's a federal offense. And I was like, whatever, man, go away, dude. Your day's over. So for me, that was it. Didn't have to lift a finger, didn't have to beat him up, nothing. That right there was enough for me.